Welcome back. I'd like to show you a unique scanning mode on the Quantum Master system. It's called a synchronous scan mode. It's useful for identifying unknown samples. Um, let's say you didn't really know the properties of a fluorescent sample. You could put a cuvette in and you could set up a synchronous scan that will give you a little bit of information about where to excite and possibly where to look at the emission uh, using a synchronous scan. It's also useful for looking at light scattering type experiments where perhaps you're looking at aggregation formation in your sample and by looking at the properties of scattered light uh, you'll be able to determine some information as to uh, aggregation formations. So for this experiment here we'll choose a synchronous scan and we'll go to our acquisition settings and I know that we need to excite UV for our BSA sample so what we'll do here is we will scan the excitation from say 230 to 450 nanometers and on the emission side we're going to start our scan at 240 so 10 nanometers higher and we can make it a little bit higher let's go say 250 and we'll scan to 470. That gives us a total length of 220 nanometers for each scan. So when this mono is exciting at, three, at 230, it'll be looking at the emission at 250. So we'll always retain that 20 nanometer shift between the excitation and the emission through the entire scan. So let's go with 0.1 integration. We'll go with a 1 nanometer step size and a 0.1 integration time and we'll simply say accept to push those parameters down to the acquisition engine and we're going to show a single window and we'll hit start next okay you can see here the monochrometer's positions let's go with our single window and the monochrometer's range is scanning right now from 230 to 450 and from 250 to 470 so this first peak we see here is usually this will be related to an absorption. As we excite around 290, there's a change in the intensity of the sample. So we see that here as an increase in the fluorescence emission of the sample. Now as we approach the emission wavelength, because we're still exciting 20 nanometers before, we see another energy change. There's a third energy change around 400 or so. I'm not quite sure what that's related to. Maybe some other fluorescent substance in the sample. And this gives us a little bit of insight about this sample on how we can generate more accurate scans next to using excitation and emission. So from this one scan, I know that, hey, I can excite somewhere in this region around 300, and I want to look at my emission somewhere around from 340 to 380 to collect the emission. And that's how a synchronous scan is very useful.